Yes, thank you members, thank you church. Yesterday I paused, I finished my sermon in the word that I said, pause. Now I want to elaborate about that when I said, thank you Lord for this pause in our life. I want to start there. And I want to say, we, we know in the English language that a pause, even though minute in a sentence, is important. A pause is a stop or a break in speaking or reading which clarify meaning. It is interesting to know that the book of Psalm used this word and term, Selah, for pause. Though even up to now, the Bible scholars are still trying to discover the exact meaning of this term, Selah. This term, Selah, is mostly used in the psalmist, in the Psalm 71, in Psalm N3, in Habakkuk. There are two proposed meanings of the term. One is Selah, is a musical term meaning to pause or rest. For singers or instrumental, uh, instrumentalists, uh, the second is what we drive from the book of Habakkuk, which indicates that it is, it means to pause, to praise or lift up the one to whom the psalm was right, uh, written. Considering all this, I think the implied version gives us a good translation of this term in English. All the earth bow down to you, they sing praise to you, they sing the praises of your name, Salah. Psalm 66, 1 and 4. All this earth shall bow down you and sing praises. Today shall praise your name in songs, Salah. Pause and color, uh, calm, think of that. Psalm 66, 4. I think and I am convinced of this, that this coffin crisis is a salah from the Lord. It is a rest or a break or a pause. So that people, including us believers, could have a time to pause, to be able to reflect on life reality. Lesson and lesson. Two, to review and to evaluate our work with the Lord. Point number three, to resolve to make necessary adjustment in our life in order to glorify more in on Jesus. More Jesus. Therefore, point number one, we give thanks to the Lord in this COVID crisis, for we were forced to reflect our life's reality and important lessons. I think that even non-religious people, we are able to see the important lessons from this COVID crisis. Many postings from their Facebook and other media come out reminding people of the reality of life. Consider this lesson from the COVID. Consider this lesson. One, life is short. We learn from the COVID that life is short. Death is sure. Point number two, jobs or worldly riches are temporal. It's good to know that. Health is wealth. We also learn that health is wealth, my brothers and sisters. We also learn tomorrow is not promised. During this COVID-19, we know that tomorrow is not promised. Eternity is at hand. Are we ready to face our maker? And, that, and uh, finally, only the Lord, through crisis, can save. We had learned these lessons of life. 
during this time of corona. And therefore, we give that to the Lord, point number two, in the midst of his COVID crisis, for we were forced to review and evaluate our lives, priorities, and value. Many of us have wa wordly rather than godly prop uh, pr priorities and value. If, you want, if anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life because of me and the gospel will save it. For what does it benefit someone to gain the whole world and yet lose his life? Mark 8, chapter that 4 and that 5 to that 6. Do not love the world of things, the world all the things in this world. If one loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride, one's uh, uh, possession is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world with it lasts, it passing away. But the one who does the will of the God remain forever. This comes from the first book of John, chapter 2, verse 15 and 17. Many of us are self-centered rather than Christ-centered. God-exalting pursuit and goals. Do not, do not restore up for yourself treasures of the earth, where mouth and trust destroy, where these break in and steal, but restore, store up for yourself the treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, where thief does not break in and steal. This is in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. Point number three, we give that to the Lord in the midst of his COVID crisis, for we are able to resolve to make necessary and significantly changes to refocus our life on what is reality, importance, and lasting in this life. I say uh, one, resolve, I resolve to prayer more diligently, faithfully for myself and for members, for faithful members and attendants. Be sober-minded, be alert. Your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a lion, and rolling lion, like for, uh, looking for anyone he can deliver. And Resist him firmly in the faith, knowing that the same, the same kind of suffering are being experienced by your fellow believers throughout the world. First Peter 5, 8 and 9. Finally, brethren, for this reason, I also, since the day we had this, we haven't stop praying for you. We are asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all wisdom and spiritual understanding so that you may walk worthily of the Lord fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. 1 Corinthians 1, 9 and 10. I resolve to share boldly and shamelessly the gospel all Jesus Christ to others who are giving the opportunity. First, first Peter 1, uh, 24 and 25. 
All flesh is like grass, and all its glory like a flower. All the grass, the grass wither, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord ensure forever. Therefore, as I almost to conclude, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, far to the Jews and to the Greeks. For it is righteousness of God that reveal from faith to faith, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Romans 1, 16 and 17. Finally, brethren, this is the challenge. And therefore, what are the godly resolution? All the necessary significant ch changes that the Lord are impressing in our heart today in order to refocus our life on the Lord. Is it with regards with your relationship with the Lord Jesus that you have not really taken seriously or made the important decision to put your faith in him or obey his commandment? Is it not about our spiritual disciplines like prayer, reading the word, worship, etc.? that you will be more diligent and faithful in cultivating and using them? Is it with regard to your lives, priorities, and values to prioritize? Prioritize your relationship with the Lord and family more than what? or other things? Is it with regard to your life pursuing goals that you will pursue more the Lord's will and purpose for your life rather than your personal ambitions and goals? Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you that we have this time with you to draw near, commune with you in spirit and in truth and be confronted with the truth of your world. Father, we give thanks to you for allowing this very important pause to happen in our life today. Thank you for forcing us to, re uh, to reflect, think about our life, our relationship with you during this time of crisis. Father God, continue to convict us our uh, fran uh, filthy, our fitness, our temporalness as men. Continue to convict, teach us to obey the prompting of the Holy Spirit that are some things in our life that need to change or be transformed and you alone come can make these changes in our life. Father, grant us the grace and power to do and obey this impression that you are placing in our hearts. Let these not become empty promises to you, but grant us the strong determination to make these changes happen in our life that we might become the person and the people that you desire us to be, godly men and women who are the salt and the light of the dark and the sinful world we live in. Father God, I entrusted you at uh, you this, the families of, the, of St. Peter Sungoroi and all those who have joined us this morning, on um, this evening, 
May all of us experience your strengthening and sanctifying grace today. May we receive the holy anointing, empowerment of your Holy Spirit for to be able to be able to do to be able to do and be the people that you call us to be as spoken by Peter a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a people for this procession to that that to that we and to that we may proclaim the praises of the one who called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Amen and amen.